Welcome to the biology section of our practice MCAT questions. In this video, we're going to be going through questions 106 to 110. So first I'll show you guys the questions so that you can pause the video and attempt them on your own. Here's question 106, 107, 108, 109, and 110. Now let's go through the questions together. In question 106, we're asked which of the following is an example of habituation. So habituation, you should know, is when we originally have some stimulus, but then when it keeps on occurring, our brain ignores it because it knows that this is kind of background data and it should focus on novel stimuli. For example, in the morning when you put on a shirt, you know that you're wearing a shirt. Afterwards, your brain keeps feeling that feeling that there's a shirt on your skin and then it ignores it because there's other important things to focus on. Same thing when someone puts like their hand on top of your arm. After a little while, you're not really going to notice it or feel it anymore. So option A is saying chickadees learning new songs when they shift to living in large winter flocks from small friendly groups. No, this isn't habituation. This isn't someone getting used to something because it keeps on happening over time. This is some, them changing to some, some shift. They're learning a different song because they're shifting from a small group to a large winter flock. No, this is a change. This isn't habituation. Uh, B, yearly migration of golden plovers from Arctic breeding grounds to South America. No, this is, once again, not within the definition of habituation. This might be something that's an instinctual thing that they have, that they migrate like this from one area to another, but it's not habituation. C, a pack of lions stalking a prey. Once again, not habituation. But D, Hydra initially contract when touched, but s soon stop responding. This is habituation. First you're touched, then there's this novel stimuli, your brain reacting to it. But then after a while, if it doesn't go away, your brain ignores it and focuses on other things. In question 107, it says myoglobin is an oxygen-carrying protein very similar to hemoglobin. Unlike hemoglobin, it is composed of a single subunit. Based on this information, which of the following characteristics is hemoglobin of hemoglobin does myoglobin not have. So myoglobin is very similar to hemoglobin. So it's similar in that it has a similar function where it binds oxygen in the blood. But unlike hemoglobin, it has a single subunit. So which characteristic does myoglobin not have? So it has some characteristics of hemoglobin, but others it doesn't. It has the characteristic of carrying oxygen, which must mean that it uses a heme group similar to hemoglobin to carry that oxygen. But the key thing here is that it has one subunit, whereas hemoglobin, you should know, has four. So there's a, there's a way in which those subunits can interact with each other in hemoglobin that myoglobin can't do. A is saying the ability to carry up to one oxygen molecule. That's incorrect. It can carry up to one oxygen molecule. So this is a characteristic it has, not one which it lacks. And hemoglobin can carry one oxygen molecule as well, but it can carry up to four. B, cooperativity. Yes, this is correct. So what happens in hemoglobin is that there are two states in which the subunit can be in. There's a tense state in which it's kind of more rigid and it can't really bind to things. And then there's a relaxed state in which it's able to bind to oxygen. And what happens is when one of the subunits binds to oxygen, it shifts into this relaxed state. And when it does, it causes the other subunits to also shift into a relaxed state because one has bound to oxygen, therefore the rest of the protein is getting ready to bind to oxygen in its other subunits as well. So one subunit cooperatively, it, it displays cooperativity, which is when one subunit starts affecting other subunits in a certain way. So cooperatively, they cooperate in binding to oxygen. They cooperate in going from this tense state to this relaxed state. You can also see cooperativity in denaturation, for example. If something is heated up too much, a protein, when one subunit starts to denature, it also affects other parts of the protein around it. And then therefore you see cooperativity in denaturation as well. It can also happen in protein folding. But in this case, we're talking about binding to oxygen. So because of the additional subunits, hemoglobin can do this, myoglobin cannot. Option C is saying a heme group no, this isn't something which myoglobin lacks because it must use this heme group to bind to oxygen. And we're told that it behaves, it's an oxygen carrying molecule very similar to hemoglobin that therefore we can deduce that it uses a similar group to bind to oxygen. And based on your knowledge of these two 
oxygen carrying proteins you should know that they both use hemes and finally d is incorrect it's not none of the above b is actually the correct answer in question 108 it says a swimmer holds their breath underwater and swims as far and fast as they can before resurfacing to breathe at the end of their physical exertion their blood will blank so someone is holding their breath underwater and then they're swimming far and fast so they have a physical exertion what's going to happen to their blood so they're holding their breath meaning there's not an availability for gas exchange so it's anaerobic exercise they're also you know exercising because they're swimming far and fast so if you're exercising this physical exertion is going to lead up it's going to lead to a buildup of waste products which means you know lactic acid in the cells and then in the blood we're talking about the blood right now there's going to be a buildup of carbon dioxide usually if you could breathe you would have gas exchange and you exchange the carbon dioxide for oxygen but in this case we can't do that because they're holding their breath so there's going to be a buildup of carbon dioxide and you should know that in the carbonic acid buffer which is inside your blood um, carbon dioxide is going to react with water to give us carbonic acid and eventually this breaks down and it becomes you know bicarbonate as well as some ions some hydrogen ions meaning it leads to an overall acidic blood so carbon dioxide reacts with water gives us an acid carbonic acid we get a more acidic blood meaning a lower ph so therefore if there's a buildup of carbon dioxide we have a lot more of this according to le chatelier's principle this equilibrium is going to shift to the right we have a lot more of the acid so we have a lot of acid in our blood is essentially what's going to happen that's what the question is asking us so at the end of the physical exertion their blood will have a lower ph yes this is correct it's going to be more acidic b is incorrect because it's implying it's going to be more basic c is saying there'd be a lower nitrogen concentration no and d is saying that they would have they would have a lower carbon dioxide concentration no they would have a higher carbon dioxide concentration they would have a lower oxygen concentration but nitrogen isn't you know significantly affected it's mainly we're talking about carbon dioxide and oxygen in question 109 we're asked which of the following is or are functions of the human pancreas so we're asking for functions of the pancreas regulation of blood glucose levels this is correct the pancreas releases insulin and glucagon and these either decrease or increase the amount of glucose in the blood therefore they do regulate blood glucose levels that's a, that's a function of the pancreas option two is saying production of digestive enzymes this is correct the pancreas it creates uh, enzymes that help us digest the foods we eat for example for fats or for you know lipases proteases for breaking down proteins so these catalytic enzymes are produced by the pancreas they're released by the pancreatic duct into the small intestine so yes it does create digestive enzymes but production of bile that is not the pancreas's job that's a responsibility or a function of the liver so it's just one and two that are our correct answers for this question in question 110 we're asked which of the following is a false statement regarding glycolysis so we're talking about glycolysis which one of these is false glycolysis does it occur in the cytoplasm that is something which is true you should know where glycolysis takes place as well as the other processes such as the Krebs cycle they do take place in glycolysis it takes place in the cytoplasm B activation of glycolysis requires 2 ATP yes this is correct one of the products of glyco sorry the one the, one of the reactants of glycolysis is 2 ATP and then we produce 4 ATP as a react as a product 2 ATP is a reactant 4 ATP is a product therefore the net reaction is production of 2 ATP option C is saying one glucose and two NAD plus molecules are the reactants this is correct we also have 2 ADP and then two of the inorganic phosphate those are also reactants and then finally option D is saying glycolysis produces two molecules of pyruvic acid which is correct one of one molecule of glucose breaks down to two molecules of pyruvic acid or pyruvate three molecules of NADH this is incorrect 
we have two molecules of NADH. And we do have four molecules of ATP, that's correct. We also see two H plus two water. But because option D said three molecules of NADH instead of two, it is incorrect. So it's a very small thing, but you should definitely know if you don't already know all the you know different reactions in glycolysis, at least know the overall net reaction. What are the products? What are the reactants? That's it for the questions in this video. If you enjoyed what you saw, make sure to check out our course. The link is right here on the page, as well as in the description. In the course, we go through a lot more questions just like this and go through all the different answer options, explaining why each one is correct or incorrect. Other than that, make sure to subscribe here to this YouTube channel to stay up to date with the videos that we post here. That's it for this video.